I'm ready to release a new Mac app that I coded myself, and it's the first of its kind in the professional photography industry arena. And it's a big deal. Obviously, I'm gonna say that because I spent a couple years in total working on this. But yeah, this video is all about the Portrait Lab. Happy New Year. I have something really amazing to review, share with you. It's actually the first of like five products and tools that I'll be releasing this year coding totally by myself. If you don't have time to watch this whole video, just go to theportraitlab.com and sign up for notifications or read through whatever you want there. The website is totally launched and ready to go. So you can download this app, try it for yourself. It's available only for Mac right now, but I'm gonna launch it and just start from the beginning and try and talk you through exactly what's going on with this crazy, crazy app that lets you relight stuff, uh, retouch stuff, create totally unique to each individual photo, grain effects, light leak effects, all kinds of crazy stuff. It runs as a simple Mac app. You just log in with your email, but it can also install as an edit in app in Lightroom Classic. So you can jump directly to the portrait lab in Lightroom Classic or as a filter in Photoshop, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so what does this thing do? Well, if you don't have any images to import right away, uh, you can just click try sample image. Um, now I coded this entire Mac app in Swift from scratch, um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes beyond just the user interface, but everything that you see here, I designed myself and yeah, had no help. <laughs> Before I get into explaining too much, let me just show you a really basic thing. I've got this photo that I took in a studio a couple years ago. Okay, say I wanted to change the lighting in this. Uh, you can go up here to the library of shot lists, is what I'm calling it, uh, and choose anything in this um, lighting category. You can also just type in something yourself if you want, but I'm gonna choose actually golden hour. Let's see what that looks like. Um, okay, hit render. Now it's got this nice little animation that says relighting and it takes about, I don't know, 15 seconds, depending on if you're at 2K resolution or 4K resolution. Now, the app is actually totally free to use uh, with 20 credits per month. So depending on the resolution you wanna render at, that can be 20 renders or 10 if you want the 4K really high res render. All the processing for this is being done on my own server. So that has real costs and expenses for me. Um, so I can't <laughs> provide this for free uh, unlimited, uh, but we'll get back into that in a little bit. Okay, here's the warm golden light and this is at 2K. So you're gonna see a little bit of banding in the shadows and stuff because it's uh, you know 2K and also uh, this is a YouTube video that you're watching, but I can adjust the opacity slider and you can see it keeps the exact same concept and pixels and everything else as my original photo. Uh, let me zoom in here pretty tight. So this is the fully replaced render with the entirely new light at 2K. So you can actually get double the resolution if you really want. And this looks ultra insanely realistic. Now, of course, what you're looking at here is not a photo. And a tool like this existing on the market is gonna have a lot of consequences that I'm not even prepared to um, you know, deal with. <laughs> but I did wanna design this in a way that uh, provided a utility beyond just creating a super ultra photorealistic representation of a new lighting scenario. Um, and that utility is lighting plans. So when you first sign up, you can go into settings and go down here to equipment and start adding a custom piece of equipment that you own or any of the popular brands of lot light of speed lights and strobes and light modifiers and all kinds of stuff. So you can actually constrain the lighting technique and uh, the look that it generates to just the equipment that you own. And you can also change uh, in the lighting diagram exactly where the lights are being placed and regenerate ideas based on that light placement. So you can just literally click and drag here. You can click anywhere to add uh, another specific kind of light if you want. And so as scary as it is as a photographer to see the ultra realistic end result, like I'm pretty sure you could deliver this to a client and they might be fine with it. There's still a fundamental utility in that you can create lighting plans and go out and, and take the photo with your actual camera if you want. You can create virtually any different kind of light setup that you want. And you can do one at a time. What I'm doing right now, you just enter something in the text bar there and then it relights it. But there's also a batch mode. So you can do just lines and lines of stuff. I'll show that right now. So here is batch mode, which basically is just however many lines of uh, renders that you want. And you've got the exact same you have the exact same access to your uh, shot list library of pre-written things and all your custom ones if you had anything saved custom. I'll just enter the first one manually, warm side light. Okay, uh, bah, 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 bah. so we don't need to do nine, 10 renders. We'll, we'll dial back a bit. Let's just do 
six. So when you hit batch render within this window, you'll start to see all of the batches that populate and you can get a little preview of the image and click on it and see it large. And at the end of the batch render, it will populate as layers. But then you can start playing around with the brush tools and, and create masking and kind of create a blend between your original photo and the final one if you want. And then you can take that blend and create a whole lighting plan from it. Uh, the possibilities of what you can do with this are pretty endless. And it also hooks into Photoshop. So you can save this as a PSD file and get all of these layers as they're saved in the session right in Photoshop as a PSD if you wanted to do something more advanced than what I offer. Uh, I mostly just have liquify and then a mask brush and a mask eraser. So you can kind of create blends throughout the layer. Now, um, this is something worth looking at. Occasionally, things will hallucinate. The text entry gets misinterpreted and the subject moves. And it still generally looks like your subject, but the concept and the way I feel most comfortable using this tool is by keeping the subject and everything else about the you know character of the person pixel for pixel the same. It's not changing anything in the catch lights or the size of their pupils or changing the way that they're facing. Again, you can on purpose type in anything you want and give it some direction to do that. Uh, and occasionally it'll do it by accident, but my goal is to get this look, the exact same pose and perspective from my camera, but with a totally different light scenario or a totally different effect. Uh, so there's another panel you might be noticing here called effects that have light leaks and film grain. And I'll show those as soon as this batch render is done. So what this does is create a layer that's intentionally designed against a black backdrop so that you can use the screen blending mode, which you have all the classic blending modes down here um, at the bottom. And when you blend something with screen, it just takes in the new overlay and keeps your original photo the same. So what's really amazing is instead of having like a pack of light leaks or a pack of film grain or something that you just plaster over everything and then adjust the intensity. This literally creates a unique render based on your source photo and the composition of that source photo and the lighting from it and gives you that as a layer that you can blend to your heart's content. You can also manipulate it and change the scale and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, these are the batch results that came back. They all look pretty darn good to me. And yeah, again, just kind of blending the uh, opacity of any of these layers against the original, you can see just how exacting uh, the recreated pixels are. It's absolutely insane. So if I was done with this, I could uh, just export here and you can see all the various export options as PNG, JPEG, various uh, you know, standard types of things, but you can also open directly in Photoshop from here or just save it as a PSD you know, somewhere on your uh, machine if you wanna get back to it later. So, and even though the generated layer is no longer a photograph, um, you do have the option of embedding the metadata in case you wanna remember later on you know, what your camera settings were for the original source photo. Um, so I'm gonna turn off all these layers and try generating a, an overlay effect. Uh, let's do warm corner. Um, let's, yeah, let's just do one right now. And uh, you'll see you have these little bookmarks, so you can click that and it will save them in this little quick section uh, without having to break out the library mode. So you'll probably have five or six absolute go-to favorites that you end up using a lot. And so you can just add those with the little bookmark tool, nothing too crazy there. Okay, so this is a completely uniquely generated kind of filmish light leak. Now the source photo doesn't have a backlit source, so that's it's kind of weird. Uh, you know, you would need maybe a sunset or a backlight or something to uh, be able to do that. But I just wanted to show you the concept of, you know, what it would look like and, um, you know, how it would blend. Let's try just some editing filters. So like literal classic looks of uh, film stock or whatever. You actually have the range of different camera lenses. So you can give it a lens model and it will try and recreate from that same perspective using the exact same, uh, using the specific lens that you've tried. So I'm gonna actually add uh, the 50.95, which is a favorite of mine. And I'm gonna add some classic sort of film looks. And I'm gonna do this in batch mode just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, but a few other things to point out. Um, if you are doing, if you type in a custom look, like a custom thing that you want to be more of an effect than just a change in the lighting or something, you can click the effect button and it will kind of flag that as 
you know, intentionally being overlaid with a blending mode. And you can also click this button, use my gear. Again, clicking the use my gear icon, uh, it will constrain what it's making based on the any gear and equipment you have entered uh, in the settings section. Uh, oh, okay, so we got the 50 millimeter lens at 0.95. Went really weird and crazy with the bokeh, but you can completely experiment and modify instructions to do whatever you want. You could even just say shallow depth of field with no lens instruction, and it will create uh, almost like a tilt shift type of effect sometimes. Again, it's a little unpredictable. You can be more descriptive if you want, but I would start by just the basics if you wanted to add shallow depth of field. But with changes like that, uh, you know, you're getting a little outside the realm of what I'm comfortable with. Again, people are gonna use this, I'm sure, for all kinds of reasons in a lot of ways that make established photographers that know what they're doing kind of uncomfortable because you spent a lot of money on your lenses to get the look that you want. You trained and practiced forever to get uh, you know, your certain lighting style and technique where you want it. And uh, I can totally understand how this might start to encroach on that work in a way that, again, I'm trying to close the gap by making this also you know, a really thorough and ultra realistic planning tool. Uh, but yeah, uh, here we go, shallow depth of field. So this kind of went free lens tilt shift on me and it looks kind of good. I don't hate it at all. As far as effects go, I really like the grain effects and uh, some, some subtle light leak effects. And just to note, any layer that's selected and active, if you double click the ability to transform that layer, if you wanted to uh, scale it up or down or rotate it or something like that, you've got basically unlimited options to do what you want. I'm gonna stop there to keep this short and sweet. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. And yeah, I'm really excited to put this out there. It is launched, use the link in the description to download it. Again, it includes 20 free renders a month and there is a way to get even more credit. And all you have to do is tag my Instagram handle. Uh, and there's a little button down here that kind of walks you through it. All you have to do is take a picture of yourself or your screen uh, using this tool and uh, tag my Instagram handle and I will send free credits to you. I don't know how long I'm going to do that for. We'll see. But yeah, I'm trying to make this as accessible to everybody who's you know, curious and experimenting with sort of the absolute bleeding edge of where things are in the photography industry right now. And though this is actually really stable and I'm really happy with the performance of it, be aware that this is a brand new release. It's on version 1.5. Some responsiveness and some buttons might be uh, a little unpredictable, but in general, it's actually been extremely extremely stable in uh, all of my testing so far. So check it out, theportraitlab.com. Again, I coded this entirely myself. I trained the entire model and everything over the last two and a half years using, uh, starting with 3 million of my own photos. It didn't actually end up taking 3 million images to, uh, to get there. But yeah, uh, take a deep dive. You can read about each and every feature. And as always, thank you so much for your attention. And yeah, I'll be back soon. Bye everyone.